Hello and welcome to our demonstration of GTE Forms 3.0. This is the pre-beta version showing what is coming in 3.0. First we're going to show you quick form creation and we're going to make an award form. So we come to the form type table and put in the form type that we want to create. We're going to assign it to an existing form family of bonus. And this award form is going to allow an employee to nominate another employee for a cash award. Next we come to the pages page and we select an add task because we want to be able to add a new form. And we're going to enter some task and step title information. Next some instructional text that will go at the top of the form. This is rich text so it can be colored or bolded or you can insert pictures or links, whatever you want in order to help them be able to fill out the form. This is going to be a config page. This is a completely configuration based form. So I'm going to create a new segment. You can make all sorts of segments and combine them to form a complex form that's completely configuration based. But this is a simple form. It's only going to have one segment. I can just put in whatever field names I want. Those will actually be turned into unique PeopleSoft fields in the background so that we can generate records to store this information in. And I can assign the field types. When I preview this segment, I can turn on the Edit Fields flag and then I can modify this segment from here. So I can change the display of this field to make it a long edit box to enter more information. I can change the order of the fields from here if I want. And when I'm done, I save this and now I have a segment assigned to this page. I also want another task. I want to be able to view the form in addition to being able to add it. So I'm going to copy. I just copied and pasted the whole task down. And now I've, uh, I've made a view form. All this left is to assign who can initiate the form. I want any employee to be able to do that, so that's pretty easy to set up. And I'm pretty much done. I just need to activate the form, and then we're ready to test it from our work center. The uh, form is automatically registered on our department work center. From here, I now have links to create or to view an award eForm. When I hit create, my form comes up. I'm able to fill it out. I can see my instructions and my header and step, my header text. When I fill it out, I can submit it. I didn't add any approval, so it's immediately submitted and available to be viewed by anyone who has access to view it. So when I click view, I can immediately see the form as well. So that's how fast it is to create a form. We've kept a transaction log of who signed it. Of course, typically form requirements are much more complex. So this is a job change form that we've already built the segments for. It has multiple pages, multiple tasks, and multiple segments on those pages. So if we drill into one of these segments, or one of these pages, we'll see that there are multiple segments here. There's a job segment and a header segment. The header carries across multiple pages. On the evaluate task, we can actually combine all the segments from multiple pages so that it's all on one page. So now if we follow through to the work center, we have links for the job change form. When we create that form and select an employee for it to apply to, we see the form that we have so far. This just has the segments that we've created. It doesn't have any pre-population. It doesn't have any lookups. But as you can see, it lays out very nicely with headings for the different segments. We, can, we support grid segments that are also configuration based. So we have a nice complex form. 
from which we can go into design mode and we can actually configure and build out this form and add functionality to this form from inside the form itself. If I have security to be a designer, I can come in and make the headers display only, for example. So uh, now I've got a display only field and everyone else who comes and uses this form will now see those fields as display only. The ability to design from inside the form really cuts down on the cycles of testing and development. I can actually shift the fields around, organize them right while I'm looking at the form. So I'm going to organize these fields. I've already made some fields display only. Next, I'm going to make some fields required. Now that those fields are required, immediately we can test that that's working by hitting the next button and seeing, oh, first we're going to uh, change a label here. We can change a label from in here. We hit the next button and we can see that that edit is already in place. We never left the form, so we can immediately trigger the edit that we just set up by making that required. Design mode allows us to even change the type of field. So instead of an edit box, I can say I want this to be a drop down and display only. And now I'm seeing the whole the whole descriptive text in the pay frequency field. But there's much more power that we can add from design mode in this form engine. We can add the ability to bring data into the field for use in many ways. The first one that we're going to look at is pre-population. Typically, pre-population is a very complex function to add to a, to a form when you're designing it. Here, we just come into the data pool and we enter a record that we want to be able to default or to pre-populate information from. We're going to use job. We signed it a record tag of job rec. We'll see that again in a minute. And now we just need to satisfy the keys. We can satisfy those keys either from the form or from a ser the search record or from, or if we choose general, we can use a constant or a dynamic source called a smart source. So I don't need to worry about effective sequence. Now that I've done that, I can, the form knows how to pull in a job record. So I can use this tool to join up the like named fields between that job record in my, in my data pool and the, uh, and the page itself the page fields, and now they are immediately pre-populating. So I have now pulled in and pre-populated information from the job record. I've gone through now and added a few more records in there. I'm going to add another record to the data pool for location. Data pool records, in addition to pre-population, can be used to set up prompts and to set up related display fields, just like in PeopleSoft. So I just need to satisfy the keys. Here I can use a constant to, to satisfy set ID if it's always going to be the same. That saves me from having to make a custom view in order to do this, this lookup. I can just use the existing record and use the way that I satisfy the keys to, uh, to, to fix that lookup to only use the keys that I want. So now I'm setting up in the edits, I'm setting up the prompt settings, and then for related display, I'm going to do the same. I choose that I want to see the description in both the pop-up uh, lookup box and for the related display. And now, I've got both a lookup and I have the related display next to that field value. All set up while I was actually looking at the form. So I can also 
change the value of this field based on another field. That's called a dependent field change or a dynamic dependency. So I just made this display only. And now when I change position number, it changes job code. Without any programming, all I had to do was point it to one of my data pool records so that it would default from position number. So now that I've updated the rest of them, all of them do that. The GT Logic Engine allows us to drive all sorts of things. When I click that override position data flag, my fields are not yet becoming enterable. So I'm going to change display only to dynamic and go into our logic engine. Here I can define a logical statement that can refer to the fields on the page. So here I'm looking at the position override, override position data and when that is not equal to Y, and I'll save that as position not overridden, then I will get specific behavior. So now the job code field and now the rest of those fields are driven, they're, whether they're display only or not, is driven by that override position data. Next, I can add my some uh, dynamic logic to whether a field, whether or not a field is required. Here I have more complex requirements. I want the, this field to be required only if position data is overridden and the employee group is faculty or student. I can use my logic engine to create a visual if expression that has more complex logic but doesn't require any coding in this case. So now I have created a more complex logical statement that immediately works. When I change the uh, employee group to student and override position data, now that field is required. At the same time, the form engine has learned the dependencies between these fields so that now when employee group changes, the lookup on position number also changes powerful behavior, powerful functionality that was learned automatically by building those dependencies using the data pool. Now here we can also use uh, people code to recalculate the value of a field. So if we want to set a, uh, if we want to set this value, the value, for example, of the override field, we want to set it back to no whenever we change position number. So we just add this short method. The fact that it refers to position number forms a dependency in the logic engine. So all we need to do is register that smart source and attach it. And now this is automatically working we can immediately set the override flag back to blank whenever we change position, just like that. And it cascades down from employee group. That ability to cascade is really powerful. We're going to show how we can manage high level complexity. So say that I have some settings that need to be different when I'm a student. I can add a condition. All of my default values are copied down. They're not only copied down, but they're maintained. So if I change something in default, it would update in the uh, conditions. But then I can override that default just by typing in what I want to be different. The red is where those where changes are being applied. The blue shows where it still matches default. So I'm just making changes. I'm removing segments that I don't want. I'm adding pages. I added actually a, a, a PeopleSoft page instead of a configuration page. So I can mix 
PeopleSoft pages with config-based pages so that I can grow the tool in grow the form in whatever way I want without being restricted by the tool. Uh, we, we can also actually add very complex visual ifs here. This just shows you how complex a visual if can be. We can drill down into multiple levels of this. So a business analyst can add whatever level of complexity is needed in order to accomplish the business goals by defining these visual lifts. In this case, the visual lifts can be used to conditionally skip pages. They're called visual lifts because when we mouse over them, we can actually see them from inside the, uh, the form type table. One of the things that we've done with, with GTE Forms 3.0 is we have added significant functionality to the delivered AWE workflow engine. We just loaded up a, an AWE engine and we've overridden the uh, user criteria so that we can define user criteria using our roster engine. The roster engine lets us define what group of people can act on this form at any given step. Here I've selected a role and then I've added the delegates for the people in that role. I'm choosing an intersection with department security so that only those who have department security out of those groups can use it. And I'm subtracting the submitter and the form subject because we don't want them to be able to approve their own form. Just like that, I've defined a complex group of, of users for this form, and I can do that at every form type. And I can save these roster groups and reuse them in order to form just the approval that I want. I can also use visual ifs to actually control whether or not that step gets skipped or not. We've also enhanced notifications, so they are now easy to configure. As we come in and uh, come into the no notifications tab, we can see all the steps. We can quickly set up a routing that will go to every, every user who receives the routing. The uh, form action, can, any form action can have a routing and any of the AWE workflow events can be triggers. So we're, we're not going to show the setup of that, of that email template, but that is HTML based. So we can make, and we'll see an example in just a moment of the HTML email that that generated. So now we're ready. We're going to log in as the initiator and we're going to submit this form. It's already pre-populated. We can see all of the uh, derived values under position number and their, uh, and their lookups, we can add a comment, choose an action reason. Typically, we can we calculate this, but uh, for this short demonstration, we'll just select one. And we see the routing. And, and a conditional skip happened based on the action that we chose. We can actually go in and see the email that went to the next approver. From that email, we can drive right into the form itself. This is a view that has everything on one page, so we can review that, review the comments, add a comment, approve the form. That'll send it to the next approver. We are keeping track of those approvals. Approvers can also work the form from their work list if they want. And all the way along, activity is being logged so that when we view the form, we can see all the signatures and actions that have taken place on the form so far. There are our two signatures and the visualizer for AWE. So using this powerful new tool, you can automate any business process.